Have you ever wanted to give yourself health problems on purpose? Here are five video games guaranteed to raise your blood pressure. So if you have high blood pressure already, you probably shouldn't play these games. I don't know, I'm not your doctor or anything, but if you have low blood pressure, this video will definitely cure it. My professional medical advice, despite not being anything close to a licensed physician, is to watch this video. For very legal reasons, that's a joke. First game we have on this list is Bioshock 1, because I haven't played Infinite yet, so I can't tell you about it. But in the first entire 30 minutes of that game, my ass cheeks were firmly and utterly clenched like a rock. Honestly, I don't like tense games at all, where things kind of just jump out at you. I still have never played a horror video game to this day. Uh, the reason Bioshock doesn't count as that is because that's not its central or kind of crutch element. It doesn't fall back to horror. It's a complex, honestly pretty fun game with fun mechanics and a gripping story. I say pretty fun like it isn't a fucking masterpiece. Not to be a review Andy, of course. The next game on this list is Deathloop, which for a very different reason can do the same thing. It's an extremely underrated FPS shoe stealth action game where you're stuck in a one day time loop forever. In this game, if you die, you have to restart at the beginning of the day, taking what you've learned with you, I guess, but you lose your shit if you don't have enough of a specific currency. The permadeath aspect, of course, is very daunting. Knowing there are pretty annoying consequences to getting shit on by an NPC, even the most stealth-averse gamers will tiptoe everywhere. By stealth-averse gamers, I mean me. I'm just not very interested in stealth. I prefer to run in and cause chaos. But the problem is the AI in this game is actually pretty intelligent and will start to act suspicious if they smell you lurking around like a fucking creep. Also, if you keep the default difficulty, it adjusts based on how well you're doing. So in the beginning, you can run in like a maniac when it's easy, but then the game will adapt and you're kind of forced into stealth. Stealth dependent games in general make me do these weird constipated faces while I'm playing and make me very uh, on edge. Have fun. At number three, again for a completely different reason actually, we have Overwatch. In celebrating its pretty bare bones sequel, if I'm being honest, I put this game on the list because I've been playing a shit ton of it recently and it's actually been enjoyable. Yes, the typical frustrations with teammates and playing the game and toxicity are there, but 5v5 is just the superior format and it's made playing the game much less cancerous than before. I'd like to think that the community is maybe a little bit better, but I've seen toxicity almost every day that I've played. It might not be in every game or almost every game like it was these past couple of years with Overwatch 1, but I guess I wouldn't count on it. Regardless of that, Overwatch is pure, high octane, unnecessary maximum levels of stress and focus, especially at the peak of team fights. Your head has to be on a swivel and because there's so much happening, all around you at once, all the time, you will build up that stress until finally when you die because of quote unquote bullshit, you were out of position. You will let out a hellacious roar. If you use like 20 ults, I'll just ah! like It'll sound like you're getting tortured. You will then go back to playing the game as if nothing happened. People will wonder, are you even having fun? The answer is yes. Competitive multiplayers are an entire category of their own. You can rank them individually based on how much they raise your blood pressure, but I just wanted to stick with mostly single player stuff, throw Overwatch in there because it did come out with its sequel and it's pretty fun. Number four, any of the Metro games, the entire franchise. Oh my God, while this game is technically not a horror game, I think it's the closest thing to it on this list. Metro 2033 takes place 20 years into the future in good old mother Russia. Humanity has fucked up a very big time at this point and the world was destroyed in an apocalyptic event. It was probably nuclear disaster. The Earth's surface is irradiated, uninhabitable. Most of the population is dead and whoever's left went to go live in the subway systems of Russia, hence the name Metro. Oh wow, he said the name of the game in his story summary. There are scary mutant monsters that fuck with your head and instill a sense of terror into every second of the game. Metro is uber realistic. If the world ended and there were mutant monsters on the hunt for us on the surface, 
Metro depicts exactly what that would be like. The only time you have any reprieve from that gnawing feeling that something's gonna violently rip your limbs off at any given moment uh, is when you're at the civilian bases where you stock up on ammo and talk to NPCs for stories. Otherwise, you are constantly on edge, constantly elevating your blood pressure to probably unhealthy amounts. You might be asking yourself, why would I ever play a game like this? Which is fair, but the Metro games aren't just terrifying, they're terrific. Ooh. So if you have an adrenaline problem and want to play a really good game, uh, Metro's definitely for you. In Grounded, you become very small. So small, in fact, that blades of grass tower over you like three-story buildings. And every ant, bug, flying motherfucker, and spiders are your enemies. The giant enemy spider. <laughs> At first, Grounded seems like a typical survival crafting game. They just kind of did a little gimmick thing where you're very small, the size of an ant, but very quickly into the game, you understand how weak and pitiful you are and how futile your efforts to exist peacefully in this backyard are. I was just humbled for the first time like this in a while. Eventually, you kind of power up and learn how to deal with the more heinous insects, but nothing hits quite like that adrenaline I can't say that fucking word, man. Adrenaline. Adrenaline. But nothing hits quite like that rush of first having a massive spider leap at a horrifying velocity, making a beeline directly for your jugular. The game itself is fun. The combat feels nice and rewarding. There's a decent amount of freedom in how you can go about building your base, designing it. The graphics look nice and clean. Can't really complain. Uh, it also takes a bit of time to get settled into the game and progress. So if you want non-stop brain stimulation through shiny things constantly exploding in your face, this game is not for you. With that, we come to the sorrow conclusion of this video. But hey, you can watch my other videos if you subscribe. Well, uh, look at that. That was five games that will give you high blood pressure. I've been your host, 130 over 80, and I humbly thank you for watching. I thank you for chilling, for hanging out, and as always, peace the fuck out. Bye bye